Today we've got a really nice integral that involves some hyperbolic trig functions and a lot of really nice identities that are good to keep in mind. So I think this is a good review for all of that type of stuff. Okay, so let's look at our final goal, which is the integral from zero to infinity of the hyperbolic cosecant squared minus one over x squared, all times the natural log of x dx. And we're gonna evaluate this using, like I said, some nice identities, some of which are pretty simple limits, and one of them is a series expansion. So let's look at those. So first, we'll use the fact that the limit is x goes to zero from above of the natural log of x times one over x minus the hyperbolic cotangent of x is equal to zero. And I won't evaluate this, but I will say that it follows fairly easily just by looking at the two parts of this after distributing the natural log through and seeing that each of those trend towards zero. And you can establish that a number of different ways, maybe with L'Hopital's rule. Next, we'll use the fact that the infinite limit of the hyperbolic cotangent is equal to one. And that's pretty easy to establish just by looking at the exponential version of this hyperbolic cotangent, which is the hyperbolic cosine over the hyperbolic sine, which we'll simplify to this after a little bit of work. And then finally, we'll use this series expansion of the hyperbolic cotangent, which is one over x plus, the sum is n goes from one to infinity of two x over x squared plus n pi squared. And we will sketch the derivation of this. Okay, so the idea is to start with this hyperbolic cotangent and take its antiderivative. So doing that, let's recall that this is the hyperbolic cosine over the hyperbolic sine which using u substitution or maybe just reversing the chain rule will give us the natural log of the hyperbolic sine plus some constant. Okay, but now let's maybe recall that the hyperbolic sine has zeros at maybe zero and then n times i times pi. So it's not n times pi because it would be n times pi if we had a regular sine function, not a hyperbolic sine function, but it's imaginary integers times pi for the hyperbolic version. But that means that we could maybe factor this as follows. This would be x times the product as n goes from, let's see, one up to infinity of one over one plus x squared over n squared times pi squared. And that's what we get from smushing together the two complex conjugate, you know, n i pi with the minus n i pi roots of this hyperbolic sine. But then taking the log turns the product into a sum, which gives us the following. So I'm just gonna bring this down. The integral of this hyperbolic cotangent will be equal to this sum as n goes from, let's see, one to infinity of the log of one over one plus x squared over n squared pi squared plus the natural log of x, which we get from this x, which is multiplying out front. Okay, and then we can achieve, oh, I should say we have plus some constant. But I think you can probably see just by initial conditions that that constant's gonna be zero. But now taking derivatives of both sides of this equation will give us the hyperbolic cotangent. Well, I guess since we're taking derivatives, we don't need to know that that constant equals zero. So taking derivatives of both sides, we'll get the hyperbolic cotangent on the left-hand side. Derivative of natural log of x is one over x. And then the derivative of this other stuff, you know, being 
careful with the chain rule will give us exactly this over here. So I won't rewrite it because we've got it written over here on the left or the right, depending on which way you're facing. Okay, so now that we've got all of our tools established, let's work towards our goal integral. Okay, so now we're gonna work towards our goal integral and we're gonna start with a round of integration by parts. So here we'll take u to be the natural log of x. So that means du will be equal to one over x dx. Okay, so there's our u, this is our natural log of x. And then we'll take dv to be the rest. So that'll be our hyperbolic cosecant squared minus one over x squared dx. But that means V, well, that's actually pretty easy to calculate because the rules for derivatives and antiderivatives of hyperbolic cosecant are not too difficult. This will give us one over X minus the hyperbolic cotangent of X. Okay, great. And then let's maybe underline this here because that is our DV term. Okay. So now we're gonna use the standard rule for integration by parts. We should get u times v evaluated at the endpoints and then minus the integral of v du. But since we have an infinite integral here, I'm gonna introduce a limit into the situation. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity of, now we'll have u times v evaluated at some point, so this will be natural log of x times one over x minus hyperbolic cotangent of x evaluated from zero to n times pi. That's how we're putting that infinite limit of integration into this situation. And then we'll have plus the integral from zero to n pi, where I'm gonna change the order of subtraction here to eat up the minus sign, which is built into the integration by parts formula. And then we'll have the hyperbolic cotangent minus one over x over x dx. Okay, so that's where we're at at the moment. Okay, good. But now let's look at this lower bound of integration and that can be well, expressed via this first limit, which we talked our way through, which is equal to zero. So that means we don't really even need to worry about that. And then let's look at the upper bound of evaluation here. So plugged into the natural log of x, well, well that'll clearly give us the natural log of n times pi. And then plugged into this other bit right here, well, we'll be getting something which is essentially this right here. Well, plugged into the one over x, we'll have one over n pi. As n goes to infinity, that'll go to zero. But then plugged into hyperbolic cotangent, we'll have, well, this with a change of variables. So that'll give us a one, but it's attached to a minus sign. So in fact, nets us a negative one. Okay, so let's write that down. So this is gonna give us the limit as capital N goes to infinity. Then we have a minus natural log of N times pi because of that minus one that we just talked about. But we can use logarithm rules to rewrite this as minus natural log of pi minus natural log of N. So something like that. And then I'm gonna take this integral right here and rewrite it using this hyperbolic cotangent expansion that we talked about. Notice that the one over X term will cancel because we've got that in the numerator right there. And that's gonna give us something like this. So we'll have plus two times the sum as N goes from one to infinity of the integral from zero to n times pi of two over x squared plus n times pi all squared, where I change the order of integration and summation because everything absolutely converges. So we're kind of okay with that right there. 
And now let's work on this integral right here. So maybe the first thing that I'm gonna do is factor this n pi squared out of the denominator. Okay, so I have some stuff to rewrite. So I've got my limit as capital N goes to infinity, minus natural log of pi, minus natural log of capital N, and then I'll have plus two, the sum as N goes from one to infinity. Well, actually I'm gonna write that as plus two over pi squared. I can take the pi squared out of the sum, I can't take the n out of the sum. And then I'll have one over n squared, and then the integral from zero to capital N times pi of one over x over n times pi squared plus one dx. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment over there. And now we're gonna do a change of variables in that integral. And the change of variables I think is pretty clear by the fact that we've got this x over n pi all squared. And so what we'll do is we'll set x equal to n times pi times u. Notice that means that u is equal to x over n times pi. It also means that dx is equal to n times pi du. Also, notice when x is equal to capital N times pi, that tells us that u is equal to capital N over lowercase n. Okay, so I think that's pretty interesting. So let's see where that leaves us. So we'll have the limit as capital N goes to infinity. We have a bunch of stuff just to bring down, so I'm doing that right now. And then let's see, this pi as part of the dx, we'll cancel this pi squared down to just a pi. So let's see, we'll have plus two over pi, and then we'll have our sum as n goes from one to infinity. We have one over just n now at the moment because of this n canceling that n squared down. And then we'll have the integral from zero to, like I said before, capital N over lowercase n of one over u squared plus one du. But now let's maybe bring that up so that we can finish it off cleanly. So now we're ready for the last couple of steps. Okay, so let's look up here at this integral. And this is fairly straightforward. Notice this is gonna give us the arctan of u evaluated from zero to capital N over lowercase n. Arctan of zero is equal to zero. So this simply gives us the inverse tangent of capital N over lowercase n. But notice we're taking the limit as uh, uppercase n goes to an Infinity. So that means that in the end, this is going to trend towards pi over 2 because the argument of the inverse tangent is going to infinity, and that's a fairly well known limit. But notice that this pi over 2 is going to cancel this 2 over pi, and that's just going to leave us with the sum of 1 over n, this partial harmonic series. So let's see what we have. We have the limit as capital N goes to infinity. We have minus natural log of pi, minus natural log of capital N, plus the sum as lowercase n goes from one to capital N of one over N. But notice that this natural log of pi is just a constant. And then what we have left over, this difference in the natural log and what is sometimes known as the nth harmonic number, that has a well-known limit, which is the euler mascheroni constant, sometimes called gamma. So that gives us our final answer of gamma minus the natural log of pi. And there we have it. That is the value for this integral. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.